So hi everyone, uh, in the last video I showed how to set up a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. Absolutely nothing, you just need VMs to do it, it's actually very easy. Once you have VMs that are networked, you know, very straightforward. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go a little bit more advanced. We're going to set up Rancher. Rancher is like a very nice, uh, you know, Kubernetes management uh, system. It essentially gives you the power of something like a GKE or AKS or stuff like that. So um, let's get started with that. All right. So in order to install um, Rancher, first we need to set up Helm 3. So Helm 3, unlike Helm 2, um, had a lot of um, security vulnerabilities with Teller. But from now, let's just focus on Helm 3, right? So if you just head over to Helm 3, if you Google Helm 3, you will see ooh, projects. Interesting. Uh, I just want the releases section. Yes, you just download the latest version of Helm 3. It's a binary, just add it to your path. And after that, you should have this command line called Helm. So once you do this, it generates all this. The beauty of Helm, the new Helm 3, is that it is um, it it's, uh, essentially allows you to manage like you know large installations without uh, needing to um, install anything on the Kubernetes cluster directly like Tila or whatever. So anyway, that aside, uh, let's get straight to work. So what we need to do here, right, is once we have Helm installed and added to our path, the next thing we need to do is to, um, we need to go ahead and install, you know, add the, um, add the rancher charts. Um, the charts are like, should I say installation modules or descriptions of installation. And we're gonna add it to our Helm repo. Uh, keep in mind this happens locally so just quickly run that and it adds it to our local repo and for that we also need a cert manager right that helps us generate a ssl certificate so for this one just apply apply this that adds the crds custom source definitions when that's done we just need to create the namespace for cert manager and after that, we need to disable validations in that namespace. And after that, we need to just go ahead and add the Jetstack chart for the cert manager. The reason we need cert manager is because um, Rancher cannot serve on re regular HTTP, which kind of makes sense because you don't want, uh, you know, your management of your Kubernetes cluster to happen, um, you know, in plain text essentially. So, um, once we're done with that, let's go ahead and update our repo. So, Cert Manager's job is to help us generate like SSL certificates. And for the sake of this uh, tutorial, we're going to use uh, Let's Encrypt SSL certificates. All right, so let's do this. This will now Helm repo update as it's still updating. When we're done, we deploy Cert Manager. All right. So copy this head here, deploy cert manager. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. it's not available. Oh, okay. I think I need to change. I need to change into this uh, cert manager namespace. So Kubernetes less. Okay. Um, you could just use Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a very nice tool for changing namespaces, Kubernetes namespaces. But I'm going to just do it the raw way, just so you can see it for once. So config, um, uh, let's say get context, right? This shows us what context we have. We just have Kubernetes context. So I'm going to say set context to Kubernetes, which is the name of our cluster. However, we can set the namespace this way so we want the namespace to be cert manager right and as you can see this is a lot of typing um it's just shorthand for kubernetes kubernetes set cert manager right? this is if you're on windows if you're on uh, um if you're on linux or mac it would be kubernetes set manager you don't need to you don't need to say the set there and once we're in that namespace let's go ahead and run that helm chart again okay so I think we just needed to wait for a while. Anyway, since Cert Manager is running now, we are done. Okay, so as you can see, it's saying uh, Cert Manager has been deployed successfully. Yada yada yada. So um, the next thing we need to do is to 
Ah, I will, no need for this. I can just create a, a namespace. So kubectl create namespace, and this will just be rancher. And then I just need this. This allows us to deploy um, to deploy uh, what do they call it? This allows us to deploy um, rancher with the particular let's encrypt uh, configuration. But if you have your own SSL certificate, you could just use this instead. Just create a secret and then install it in a very similar fashion. But we're going to use Let's Encrypt. It's a free SSL certificate uh, authority, and uh, they, uh, they allow you to, you know, automatically generate SSL certificates for any domain that you're interested in. So let me just craft this just a little bit better. So here I will put my email address, transgmail.com, and then I would essentially, you know, set it to Let's Encrypt. But for the host name, I would put a host name that I already have so I, I have a domain like that and uh, for the namespace uh, I feel like installing this in its own rancher namespace okay and we're good to go all right so when I copy this just to head over here I click it and that should go ahead and install the install rancher and yes it's deploying as we speak okay so but uh now that i've deployed rancher right yes it's been set up and the cluster you know and it's there listening for uh, requests and whatnot but we can't really reach it so if you remember from the previous um, um episode we just created a cluster you know had vms there and there was really nothing to it but now we need to have some kind of mechanism from reaching it from the outside world. So in order to do that, we will need a node balancer. So let's head over to Linode this time. I will explain what this node balancer does. So we go to, uh, I'm already logged in, so I don't need to disturb myself. So head over to node balancer. I already have one here, but you know, don't need to do anything. Come here, create a new one. And this time I'll call this, um, let's just call it Kubernetes load balancer right uh, add some tags to it it's part of the cluster it's kubernetes it's not really tied to any of these and then we specify the region typically you want it to be in the same region again it's ten dollars per month for the um, it's ten dollars per month for the load balancer but the cool thing is you only ever need one really just like with your cluster as well so we need two ports so we need to set up in um, port 80 and we also need to set up port 443 so 443 is for ssl and port 80 is for http um for this one i want it to be tcp ip because um i don't if you make it uh, tcp ip it becomes a layer 4 proxy or a layer 4 reverse proxy but if you make it http or https it becomes a layer 7 so for the sake of you know simplicity and other reasons um, it's good to just make it a layer 4 since we since our ingress our nginx that we set up as an ingress is going to act as our layer 7 proxy so um layer, layer 7 versus layer 4 means that layer 4 means that you know the proxy is happening at the level of ip packets while tcp ip packets while um, http https means that it's happening at a much higher level at the level of almost http as well um so don't worry about all this if you're not a networking guru but just know that it should be um ne uh, you know tcp ip you know instead of uh instead of uh, what was it called anyway so um what we're gonna do here okay yes we specify port 80 tcp the algorithm is round robin session c section of stickiness passive checks help checks whatever so now we need to add um, backend nodes. So first of all, we're going to add our first uh, Kubernetes node one, right? Um, so we come here and select it. So that's Kubernetes node one, port 80. Uh, let me just name it properly. And um, yeah, this will be Kubernetes node zero two select that as well port 18 as well and then we add another configuration now the question you ask me is why didn't i add the master as well remember what i told you the master 
a node should not receive any form of traffic. It should be just meant for managing. You can make it receive traffic if you wanted to. Um, say, for example, you're running out of budget or whatever, or you're running a small cluster, then yes, you can you know, just add it here as well. And then when you are deploying your RKE, you could just specify that it's also a worker node as well. But in general, it's a good idea to, to have them separate. If you are really serious about you know, maintaining a cluster, that's what you should do. So now that that's done, O1, O2, we need to repeat the same for SSH. Okay, so here this will be port 443. So this will be 443 on the node on the node balancer, or load balancer if you will. And then we come down here, we pick a label, same thing. It's essentially the same thing. Kubernetes or one. Paste it here, and we pick Kubernetes or one. But this time the port number would be 443. Okay, and then we repeat. So Kubernetes or two. And this time it will be 02 and it will also be 443 as well. And we're done. I think we're done. Are we done? Yes, we're done. So we go ahead and create the node balancer. Load balancer, node balancer, same thing. So yeah, it's gonna generate that. So if we head over to our configuration just to be sure that we got it right, yes, you should see port 80 with two nodes and the respective public IP addresses, I mean private IP addresses there. And uh, there should be one as well for 443 with the IP addresses as well. So um, you can just leave the name as Kubernetes Node Balancer. So what this means is essentially that you know all we need to do really is to hit this uh, Node Balancer at the IP address specified, this IP address from you know uh, any domain name, and it will essentially do a round robin into our cluster. So it will just you know um, move uh, connections into the cluster which is good because now we now need to head over to the domain name uh, our domain name uh, what name did we give the domain we said it was uh, rancher.trouble.com ah that was a mistake so let me see if i can fix that i don't have trouble.com trouble.io so let's just give it a moment Trouble.io. Repeat the same thing. Yeah, to say it's already there. So say Helm upgrade. So this would be Helm upgrade. Okay. And that should update. Yes, that should update everything. Um, just to be sure that we, see, we can say kubectl describe ingress, right? Ingress is the instructions for to describe. I can just say edit, and that will just generate oops. Oh, interesting. Okay, so let's first see how many ingresses we have. So kubectl get ingress. ingress the ingress name should be rancher right but yeah it's like it's not even here so we can just say find it and all spaces and yes it should be in the rancher namespace so let's quickly create that so kubectl cubans set rancher that switches us into the rancher namespace and then now if i say get ingress i should see the rancher ingress there so i can just go ahead and describe the rancher ingress and when i describe it i should see uh yes so this is what it has yeah, yeah, yeah. okay but what i care about is what endpoints what domain name was mapped to this so you can see it's rancher.trouble.io that means we are on point so i will need to head over to my domain name my dns host essentially sign in and uh, let's get straight to work um, yeah so i go to manage domains you can use whatever domain name you see fit um, i typically just use good at the domain, domain name so yeah trouble.io and uh, select this we need to 
change the manage DNS okay all right cool so as you can see I have some a records here for auth and um, something else so I need to create a brand new one so it's gonna be a new a record and it's going to be treble sorry it's going to be rancher right this is rancher.treble.io and as for our IP address we will pick the IP address of our new balancer so that's essentially this come here paste that and we save it okay so now that we've saved it I should be able to just say rancher dot uh, treble dot io right and that should point me to hmm, let's see if it's getting to the IP address so we could just say ns lookup ns lookup uh, huh, can't find it okay let's see okay so it's it's available now it's actually pointing to the right domain names if I refresh this it's still not working huh it's saying certificate authority invalid because it needs to get the certificate from you need to get the certificate from um, uh, what was what was it called from let's encrypt so um, if it doesn't have a valid certificate it will just use um, it will use the default Kubernetes ingress which is why it is which is why it's unhappy aha uh -huh. okay ah oh, finally I think you just have to wait a while and you the uh, SSL certificate will be installed so if you come here and click um, valid and uh, the SSS, uh, SSL certificates you will see that uh, the certificate is blah 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 by let's encrypt authority and it's only going to last from October to January 2020 but even then uh, that's the whole point of cert manager cert manager would automatically renew this SSL certificate and we got that for free which is really really cool nothing beats free so um, yeah so the first thing you see is you're welcome with this screen I can minimize this now so this is now rancher installation so the first thing you now need to do is um, the rancher server URL this is important because you see every node in your cluster should be able to reach this URL if it can't there will be serious uh, consequences so depending on depending on what your setup is right you may not want to use a domain name here you may want to specify the private IP of your master node right that that also works as well um, okay maybe we should just do that but it could be anything really it the only downside is that it just means that if you are creating clusters in future with rancher those clusters need to be able to reach this domain if they can't reach this domain then you got problems all right so let's change that to the IP yeah okay let's go ahead and save this so when we save this it will ask you for your current password the current password is admin once you have if you've never you know if this is the first time you're creating a cluster current password is admin but if you want to now specify your own password then you need to um be careful about this so let me go ahead and do that and repeat right and once we're done we just need to click continue and yes the password is saved it redirects us back to our cluster and as you can see rancher is up and running we have a uh, ssl certificate cost a uh, courtesy of uh let's encrypt which is really good and we can see you know a lot of interesting um, information like it's telling us that we've only used 0.2 percent of our cluster we have uh, 0 0.3 and so on and so forth and we're just waiting for the it to broadcast the server URL to all the nodes in the cluster. So I hope with uh, all this, I've been able to show you how to set up Rancher in a highly available fashion, in such a way that you know um, it doesn't just go down. It's it's built into Kubernetes as well, and this gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of managing your cluster, so that you don't have to be um, using kubectl all the time. So I hope you were able to learn something and we'll see you next time.